This video introduces task 2-1 of the Risk Management Framework, RMF, Common Control Identification. This video is part of the RMF lab and training environment. Details of how you can get a preview of step 1 of the RMF training program will be available at the end of this lesson. Task 2-1, Common Control Identification, is part of step 2, the select step of the RMF and is part of initiation in the system development lifecycle. The primary responsibility for this task is the Chief Information Officer, the Senior Information Security Officer, the Information Security Architect, and the Common Control Provider. These roles are supported in this task by the Risk Executive Function, the Authorizing Official or Authorizing Official's Designated Representative, the Information System Owner, and the Information System Security Engineer. At this point, you may be asking yourself, what exactly is a common control? A common control obviously is a security control. It's inherited by one or more organizational information system. It's provided by a common control provider, but it may also be provided by an information system owner and be presented as a lateral control. It must follow the same RMF process to achieve an authorization to operate or an ATO. A common control is one of the three types of controls that is recognized by the RMF. In addition to common controls, there are system controls that are implemented by the information system owner and then hybrid controls that are implemented as a common control that is enhanced by additions at the information system level. In this slide, we can see an example of a common control, in this case, AT1, or Awareness and Training Policy. This control is developed and maintained by a common control provider and then provided as an inheritable control to systems A, B, and C. By doing this, systems A, B, and C do not need to implement AT1. Rather, they can inherit it from the common control provider. In some cases, the common control that's being provided for inheritance doesn't meet the security requirements of the information system. In these cases, the information system owner can reinforce the control or add supplemental security, making the control hybrid, partially implemented by the common control provider and partially implemented by the information system owner. In rare cases, inherited controls can even be blocked. While it's possible to block control inheritance, we don't recommend doing this, as in blocking an inherited control means that the information system owner will be required to implement 100% of the control that could possibly be inherited from a common control provider. In this case, again, we see AT1, Awareness Training Policy, can be inherited from a common control provider. However, System D has determined that they should block the inheritance of this control. System D will then be required to comply with all of the requirements of control AT1. Common control providers, like information system owners, are required to comply fully with the RMF. This means that CCPs are responsible for documenting security controls in a security plan or other document that's been prescribed by the organization, ensure that common controls are developed, implemented, and assessed for effectiveness by qualified assessors with a level of independence that's required by the organization. These assessors will then document the findings in a security assessment plan. The common control provider then will produce a plan of action and milestones for all common controls that have been deemed less than effective by the security control assessor. The common control provider will be required to achieve an authorization to operate or ATO for the common controls from an authorizing official and the common control provider will need to monitor common controls for effectiveness in an ongoing basis. Common control providers are much like information system owners in the way they process their controls through the risk management framework. Common control providers should provide key documents to information system owners that are inheriting controls from the provider. These documents include the plan of action and milestones, changes to the common controls, 
changes to the common control authorization status, and new threats to the common controls. This type of information should be provided in an ongoing basis to information system owners that are inheriting controls from the common control provider. In this simple example, an information system's security control traceability matrix requires 122 controls be implemented. 70 of these controls are inheritable. If the system owner inherits all 70 controls, they will be required to implement 52 controls at the information system level. All inherited controls are documented as such in the SSP and the SCTM. In summary, this video defined the alignment between Task 2-1 and the SDLC. We've determined responsibility for this task. We've defined common controls and common control providers. We define types of controls. We've looked at inheritance models. And we've determined CCP requirements. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified when new videos are published. If this video helped you at all, please like and share with others. This video is part of the Cyber Recon RMF lab and training environment. Cyber Recon's RMF training includes multimodal instruction, which includes learning games, video instruction, practice quizzes, weekly live interaction, a new and updated RMF book, a new and updated RMF lab guide, and hands-on experience in a simulated live environment. For a limited time, we're offering a free preview of Step 1 of the RMF training program.